What's up, YouTube? Murphy Farms Training here. Got a new toy. It was a 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. And it came with this, which is a Kanai chest holster. So this is a Kanai Alaskan chest holster. And I want to walk you through a few things about this. Came with the revolver. And uh, the reason for this video is that I recently purchased this guy, which is a Hoskins chest holster. And this is for my 45 in, Ruger American in 45 ACP. And I bought this to carry outside of my hunting clothes earlier this year. I have carried it hunting. I have enjoyed it quite a bit. I'm going to talk about it some. And with the 460 came this holster. And so I want to compare the two. That's kind of what I want to do today. So first thing I want to do is just compare how they're made. I'm going to take a few measurements to show you guys. So first of all, these are very, very similar. you got a, a, a shell held together by rivets. And this one doesn't show up well on camera, but it's actually OD green. It almost looks black on camera, but it's OD green, not black. And uh, I didn't pick the color. Like I said, it came with my 460. Um, the guy who sold it to me actually carried it in this rig in Alaska. So he had to worry about brown bear, and I don't. But I will carry the gun in the chest holster in the dead of winter hunting just because. May not carry it with 460 loads, but we'll see. I've got to shoot the gun some first and, and all that. But anyway, so the Kanai chest holster has got uh, riveted construction. So rivets all the way around. Um, it is a three buckle design. So a uh, big buckle here. This is the strap that goes over your back that connect that controls the depth of the holster. How, how it rides on your chest. And then these two buckles here go around your waist, okay? The over-the-shoulder that controls the depth is a wider strap that's adjustable. And then the around the waist is a narrower strap. And I'm going to guess, just looking at these, I'm going to measure them in a second. This looks like a you know about a belt width. It's about an inch and a half, and this is uh, about a two-inch. It is a firm nylon sewing here and here. There's no give in it at all. And then in the middle of the back, you have this T-shape. So this is around the belt. And it's got some elastic. And this is the over-the-shoulder. And it's got some elastic. Okay. And that's how it's made. It is a three-buckle system. So three buckles. Okay. Voila. Okay. The Hosking holster. Same nylon webbing. Okay. It's, you know, inch and a half going around. Uh, very, very stiff nylon webbing. Looks to be the same two-inch going over the shoulder. Again, very stiff nylon webbing. Um... In the middle of the back, it does have the T-shape here that has elastic this way and elastic this way. The Hosking holster looks to be pretty much, it's the same thing, a riveted shell. So pretty much very similar. Um, I will say the one difference is the Hosking holster came with an available upgrade that I did get. Is This is actually supposed to come with three buckles. And he offers, for an extra five bucks, what he calls the one-buckle system, which is one buckle here and then no buckles on the other two connections. So you have one buckle to fail versus three. Um, I did pay for the five bucks to do that. Um, um, you know, and, and the way I take both of these off is to undo this buckle and then just take it apart. I don't take the other two buckles loose. So let's talk about uh, the similarities. I mean, they're both riveted shells. Um you know, both three buckle systems. They both have the flexible T back. Um, so where are the differences? Let me give you a couple of differences. One is these are riveted. All these two connections here that go around your waist on the Kanai chest holster are riveted. On the Hosking holster, these two actually have Allen screws. Now, whether that's a pro or a con to you, I don't know. But that's one of the differences. There's Allen screws versus rivets. They do both pivot, so that doesn't change the comfort. Um, I guess these screws could come loose, whereas those rivets could not. Um, I, I don't. I don't know if that's an advantage or a disadvantage if you're in the middle of nowhere. Okay. There is one very large difference that I have noticed, and I have worn both of these. Um, I've worn this one several times hunting and a few times around the house, and I've worn this one a couple of times around the house and one time out into the woods. Uh, was out in the woods for about three hours walking around doing some scouting and wore this with with a three and a half pound gun in it. Um, and the big difference is that the the strap, the wide strap that goes over your shoulder that controls where this thing rides on your chest, the chest height control. This one on the Hosking holster is an Allen screw. 
and it pivots. On the Kanai holster, it is two rivets, and there is no changing this angle. And at first, I thought I would dislike this. There is also some elastic here, okay? So it adds an extra piece of elastic in the Kanai holster. I did not think I would like this. However, after having worn both of them, uh, I actually like this better. And the reason is because I have found as I wear this one and I move, the gun will shift. The angle the gun sits at will shift depending on what I'm doing or how I'm moving or how I'm sitting. And I don't really like the angle of the gun moving. I set the gun up for the for, for the right draw. It's very comfortable. Um, and, and when I did my first video, I set the gun up for a comfortable draw and I really liked it. But what I found is hours upon hours in the woods, the gun will shift its angle. And I do not like that. Um, what I am going to do is I'm actually going to tighten the screw down before I wear this again. Um, I actually plan on going hunting tonight, so I'm going to wear this again tonight. I'm going to tighten the screw down. I'm going to wear this gun hunting tonight. And I'm going to see if perhaps that will prevent this from moving. So if I can get this screw tight enough that this angle doesn't change, then I would say that they are pretty much even to me. So real quick, let's take a few measurements. And of course, I am overkill. I did bring out the calipers for this. But this strap is what I had handy. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's what I had handy. It is an inch and a half, as I thought it was. And the over-the-shoulder looks to be, like I said, about a two-inch strap. Uh, and it is. Uh, and that's on both of these. And just because someone will make a nasty comment, I will measure both. But uh, the Kanai is inch and a half around the waist. And the Kanai is a two-inch uh, actually slightly narrower than two inches uh, over the shoulder, but it, it's two inches. If you measure with a tape measure, it's two inches. The reason I broke out the calipers, actually, is I want to measure the kydex thickness. So I'm going to measure the Hosking holster first. I'm going to find a nice flat spot here. Uh, let me use the front piece of kydex here. And I am getting point zero. It's zero point. Zero nine zero, so ninety thousandths basically, ninety thousandths kydex. Make sure you guys can see that uh, on the camera there. Ninety thousandths kydex, and then the Hosking holster, or excuse me, on the uh, Kanai holster, I'm going to do the same. Uh, it actually clocks in. Uh, well, actually clocks in about eighty uh, eighty seven thousandths. Uh, let me check the front since I did the front on the Hosking. Uh, the front kydex actually clocks in where I'm where I'm able to grab it at. Let me grab it up here where I can get a better bite. Um, well, depending on where I grab it, that's actually clocking in under eighty thousandths. Uh, back here, clocked in at about eighty eighty five about eighty five thousandths. So, depending on where I grab this, the uh, Kanai holster is clocking in just over eight. That's eighty two thousandths there. Let me take a few more measurements on the Hosking holster here. Uh, and it may be that I'm not finding a good flat spot here, but that's about 87 there. That's about 85 there. Yeah, so I mean somewhere somewhere in that 80 something. There's 80, there's 81, 80, I need my reading glasses to be reading this caliper. 81, 82 thousandths. So, so these 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 things are coming in. I think your standard kydex thickness is about 90 thousandths. And so, of course, when they form it, things thin out and whatever. So, I mean, these are the same the same material pretty much. They're the same thickness of kydex. They're both molded to the specific gun. They both have very similar retentions. Um, they're both riveted construction. Uh, the big difference is this guy's holster here, uh, uh, Matt Hosking from Idaho. By the way, I bought this with my own money. He didn't send it to me, and he doesn't know me. I'm just comparing two products that I happen to have handy. Um, his product is about 50 bucks cheaper than this Kanai holster would be. Um, and really, the only difference between them is this extra piece of, piece of elastic on the Kanai. And like I said, this fixed angle of the over-the-shoulder. Otherwise, these holsters, in terms of, of their quality... Um, actually this has a few more rivets in it than this does, but I don't know that that's a fair comparison because this is a different gun. It's a longer gun. So, I mean, it may be if I bought this 
shell from this company would have the same number of rivets. So I don't, I wouldn't even go so far as to say that is is a difference. But but that's the only thing. And I will say the the uh, the straps for this tend to look. They look like. Let me get a nice close up of these. They they look like they have a higher thread count, if that makes any sense at all. These these straps do look a little a little cheaper, a little thinner, a little a little. I don't know. I mean, they're not flexible at all. They're just as rigid. They do the job. Um, but you know, if you ever get a higher thread count sheet, it's just smoother because there's more threads per inch. The uh, Kanai straps look like they're a little a little higher quality. But again, um, nothing that I think would 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 hurt this holster long term. So anyway, um, that's a comparison of the two holsters. I hope that's helpful for someone if you're looking for a chest holster. I will say if if you wear a gun with heavy winter clothing and you want your gun to be on the outside and hip carrying is not working for you, this is a great way to carry in a rural or remote area. Um, this is how I carry when I deer hunt. So, um, that, and I bought it specifically. I've got my 45 with night sights and I carry that gun with a full mag of hollow points. Um, and that is what I carry. So when, if I need to lay my rifle down and I'm walking along with a flashlight in one hand and, and, uh, and I really want my other hand to be free, but I also want to have a firearm available. This is how I carry. And having the night sights is really nice. If you shoot a deer in the evenings, you're tracking a deer, you get a flashlight in one hand. It's a great carry option. Um, like I said, this holster, I didn't buy it. It came with a used gun that I purchased. I will carry this revolver, this 460 uh, Performance Center in this holster because I do like this method of carry. So... Um, now I have two chest holsters. I went from zero to two in, in, in a year. So anyway, um, so I hope that's helpful to someone. I hope maybe someone can help make a decision. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, very similar products. So, and if you like the three buckles, you can buy the Hosking holster with the three buckles, or you can buy it with two solid straps and one buckle. Um, and I'll update the comments on this screw and see if I can tighten it down enough that this doesn't pivot when I'm walking. So anyway, thanks guys. Appreciate the support. Give me ideas for videos and, uh, you know, like and subscribe, share the video if you like it. Hopefully it helps somebody. Thanks.